Hello everyone, today we're going to cover the process of exporting a DWG file from AutoCAD and importing it into Maya. There are two distinct methods that I've learned and I use either one of them depending on certain factors that you will see later in the video. The first method involves transforming the lines of the DWG into curves in Maya. This method is quite heavy on the RAM depending on the amount of detail present in your DWG file. So if your project looks anything like this, then you may find it difficult to get it to import smoothly. So with that, let's begin. The first method. Open your DWG in AutoCAD. Click the A button on the top left. Go to Drawing Utilities, Units, and let's make sure that the unit is correct. For me, it's meter. This is crucial for automatically getting the real-world scale as we import it into Maya and as such avoid having to rescale it later, which is a big pain. After that, we're gonna make sure that the scene is on the origin of the axis. Sometimes your scene will be far away from the origin point, and when imported into Maya, it'll be very difficult to see it in the viewport, let alone move it back to the origin. To do that, Simply type the command UCS icon, hit enter, then see if it's on or off. Now if it's off like this, you want to enter on again, then type UCS icon again, and type origin. This will show the origin point where we want our scene. If you can't see it, just zoom out and it will appear. Next, we're going to move the scene by selecting all, pressing move, Click in the middle of the scene, then click again on the origin point. Now, save the scene. It is time to open up Maya now. First, we're going to set the project window by going to File, Project Window, New, and type in your project name. And hit Accept. To make sure we're on the correct directory, Go to File, Set Projects, and make sure it's set to the folder that we just created. Now it's time to set the unit for the scene file. Go to Windows, Settings, Select Preferences, Preferences, Settings, and change this to the same unit that your AutoCAD project is using. Also, make sure that you have the Outliner here by navigating to Windows, Outliner. This will be useful because any object that will appear in our scene will be here in the outliner. To make sure that Maya can import the DWG, go to Windows, Settings, Slash Preferences, Plugin Manager, and search for ATF. Make sure that ATF plugin is loaded and on auto load. Now here, we're going to save the project by hitting Ctrl S and saving it to the scenes folder of our project. With all that said and done, it's time to import our file. Go to File, Import, and navigate to your DWG file. If you don't see it, make sure Files of Type is set to All Files, and then import the file. Now this may take a while, so go grab a drink and come back in a minute. Before you go, there's a chance that the importation will take less than 2 seconds, and there will be nothing on the Outliner, nor on the Viewport. If that's the case, then you want to go back to AutoCAD and save the projects as a 2018DXF instead from the Save As Other Formats menu. This will result in a bit of a larger file size and a longer time to import, but it will make sure that your AutoCAD project is 100% detected and imported within Maya. I have worked with all sorts of DWGs and the 2018DXF is the one that I go to the most because it always works. After having successfully imported the DWG file into Maya, it is necessary that we set up the camera to be able to see such a large scale scene. To do that, in the viewport, go to view, select camera, go to the attribute editor on the right, and select burst shape. Add a few zeros increasing the far click plane and optionally set the near clip plane to 
or one to avoid the black artifacts on your 3D models later on. This will not be something that you see straight away, but it will help later. With that, we are set to go. The following is optional, but if you want to further organize your scene in Maya and work more efficiently, follow along. We're going to start by selecting all the curves in the outliner by selecting the first one and shift selecting the last one, and grouping them using Ctrl G. Additionally, if you want to disable the selection for this group, meaning that if you have an object in your scene and you select it but you accidentally select the curves as well, they're not going to be included in the selection. Or you want to toggle the visibility. So many times I just wanted to, instead of deleting the entire curve, there are many times where I just wanted to disable the visibility. I did not want to delete the entire curves. I just wanted to toggle the visibility on and off. If you want to do that, you want to head to the channel box slash layer editor and click on the button to the right that says create a new layer and assign selected objects. This adds all the selected objects to a layer which you can toggle its visibility and be able to select geometry within it. Now if you want to be able to see your scene from the top view, you want to simply select the group and rotate it on the x-axis by 90 or minus 90 depending on which way you want your project to face. And now you're all set to start modeling upon this reference. Don't forget to save your project. Method 2. If your DWG file is too big, has too many details, takes forever to import to Maya where it causes massive performance issues as I mentioned, that the first method uses a significant amount of RAM, then you may want to resort to the second method, which can be summarized as printing the drawing on a PNG image that you can use as a reference in Maya. Let me show you how it's done. Open the DWG file and type plotter manager in the command bar. You will be directed to the plotters folder in the AutoCAD program directory. Click on add a plotter wizard. Next, make sure it's my computer, next. Raster file format, portable network graphics PNG. I'll write a plotter name for later use. You know, you can name it PNG or something. Click next and then finish. Now double click on the new PC3 file created. Go to the device and document settings tab. Click on custom paper sizes then add. Start from scratch. Now here you can set the resolution for the final PNG file. The good thing about the PNG format is that the size is very low, even on high resolutions. So you can set it to 5K or even all the way up to 20K. For this example, we're just going to use 5000 x 5000. Name it. and finish. To change the background color of the PNG, go to Properties, Custom Properties, and select any color. You can also get more options when you click on Other. I recommend that you set it to a light gray color, as most of the lines in the scene will be ultimately printed in a black color. Now back to AutoCAD. Now it's time to print the plot. Enter the command Plot, and set the plotter name to the PC3 file we just created. From the paper size dropdown, pick the one you named, and in the plot area choose window, and just draw a rectangle over the area that you wish to export. Set the plot style table to acad.cdb, hit yes, and then set the shading quality to maximum. Hit OK and save the image wherever it suits you. Now that we have a high quality PNG image of our project, let's open up Maya and 
just set the project as shown in the first method. And don't forget the units. Now all we need to do in the top camera viewport is go to view, image plane, import image and locate the PNG that we just exported from AutoCAD. Now you can scale it up until it's visible, we're gonna deal with the scale later. And for the best possible quality, go to attribute editor and in the texture filter choose mipmap trilinear. Now if the scale of this scene is something that is very important to you, so you need the dimensions of the image to accurately represent the dimensions of the AutoCAD drawing. There is not a quick way to do it. However, I have come up with this workaround that always works. Go back to AutoCAD and calculate the distance between two points that you can memorize and that are aligned either vertically or horizontally. Now go back to Maya Select the image plane, press W to go on move mode to show the axis of the image plane, then press D just once to move the axis without moving the object, and put it on one of the two points that we just chose. If pressing D doesn't work, then try holding D, and then moving it while you're still holding until it's on the point. Now go to create, measure tools, distance tool, and you want to put the first locator on the first point and the second locator in the direction of the second one. So in this example, it's going to be to the right. Now select the second locator. You can select it from the outliner and move it to the right or whichever the direction that you chose until the distance between the two equals the same distance that we calculated back in AutoCAD. And once that's done, select the reference image. The plane axis should still be on the first point. Now all you have to do is scale it up by pressing R and dragging. It's gonna drag from the first locator. And so you only need to align the second locator with the second point. Once the points in the image align with the locators, it is safe to say that the image now represents the real life scale in which the AutoCAD project is. Now after that's done, you can make the reference image impossible to select or toggle its visibility as we did in the first method. Just select it, add it to a layer, and then you can leave it on R as in reference, which means you can no longer select it, or you can toggle the V button to show or hide it. And that's it, you're set to go now. Go ahead and start modeling your scene using the image as a reference. If you have any more questions or something isn't quite working, let me know down in the comments. Thanks for watching.